Well, hello, and welcome to the lesson on the Calvin cycle. Here is Mr. Cute Calvin. So the Calvin cycle is a process by which plants actually make glucose or carbohydrates. The Calvin cycle, which was also known as the dark reactions, doesn't require light directly to run. Um, it uses the ATP and the NADPH that were made in the light reactions to take carbon dioxide and turn it into glucose or add electrons to carbon dioxide um, to make glucose. So in this case, uh, carbon dioxide is reduced to glucose using the electrons that were excited and passed um, in the electron transport chain of the light reactions. Now, if a plant is given an ADPH and ATP, they can do the Calvin cycle without light directly. The Calvin cycle takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast, and the stroma provides the necessary enzymes needed to do the Calvin cycle. So kind of just like the Krebs cycle, um, we're going to look at the Calvin cycle and not look at all the details, um, but to sort of look at what happens in general. But the Calvin cycle has three distinct phases. One is called carbon fixation, and carbon fi fixation is how CO2 is brought into the cycle. Then the second phase, which is the reduction of the carbon dioxide brought into the cycle. Um, and then finally, the regeneration of the thing that accepted the CO2. Remember, this is a cycle, so it continues, it cycles, so it has to have something that regenerates the initial molecule. We're going to look briefly, not in much detail, but in a little bit detail, of these three phases of the Calvin cycle. So this slide provides an overview of the Calvin cycle. You'll see that as we look at it, per one cycle, we have three carbon dioxide um, entering the cycle. Um, and we're going to look at the three phases of the Calvin cycle. We have carbon fixation, which is how CO2 is brought into the cycle. Then we have reduction, which is how essentially glucose is made. And then we have the regeneration of, of the carbon dioxide uh, receptor, which is known as RUBY-P. Um, but we're going to look at each of these phases individually. So in the carbon fixation, um, phase of the Calvin cycle, three carbon dioxides are brought in to the cycle, and they are bonded to a molecule known as RUBY-P. Now RUBY-P is a one, two, three, four, five carbon molecule. And what happens is that carbon dioxide is added to RUBY-P, three of them, and this is done by the enzyme RUBISCO. Rubisco, as when I was telling you, is one of the most important enzymes on, on the earth. It's responsible for making glucose and starting the Calvin cycle. If we could inhibit Rubisco, we would, we would have world domination because the plants would no longer be able to make glucose, and eventually all the plants would die, and then we'd have nothing to eat. The new cat is named after, whose name is Ruby, or, or is named after this enzyme, Rubisco. She's actually sitting underneath me right now, looking at me as I'm talking to the computer, thinking I'm crazy. But what happens is that Three, one carbon dioxide essentially is added to a, to Ruby P, making, making three, so I guess making three six carbon sugars or six carbon molecules. And then what happens immediately is that these th si three six carbon molecules are broken in half to make six three phosphoglycerate. These details are not important. All you really need to know about the carbon fixation part of the Calvin cycle is that carbon, carbon dioxide is added to RUBP um, and it's done by the enzyme RUBISCO. RUBISCO's full name is ribose bisphosphate carboxylase. So I guess when I'm calling my cat to eat, that's really what I should say. Come here, ribose bisphosphate carboxylase. But I feel like she would lose patience for that. Um, so this is the, again, again, this is the enzyme that adds carbon dioxide to the acceptor molecule of RUBP. And as I said before, it's the most important enzyme on the earth. We're now going to take a look at the reduction phase um, of the Calvin cycle. And simply what happens in the reduction phase, and, and then this is what I really want you to write down and know about the reduction phase, is the energy from ATP along with the electrons and hydrogens from NADPH, which are made in the Calvin cycle, are used to reduce these molecules. At the end of the reduction phase, we have six molecules of G3P. G3P is half a glucose molecule. So at the end of the reduction phase, which uses ATP and NADPH from the light reactions to reduce these molecules, 
add hydrogens to them and add electrons to them. What we have at the end of the reduction phase is six molecules of G3P, which is half a glucose molecule. Now, in the last phase, which is the regeneration of the carbon dioxide receptor RUBP, which carbon dioxide 2 was added to in the first place, we need to regenerate that. So in actuality, of these six G3P, or half glucose molecules that we just made, only one is used to make glucose. The other five, and the other five are used to regenerate RUBP. So we have G3P, five of them, and using the energy of, it, of ATP, remember made from the light reactions, this goes through several enzymatic reactions, which are used to regenerate the RUBP that started this cycle. Notice at this point that we actually haven't made glucose. We've only made one G3P, or half a glucose. So what has to happen is this reaction has to happen again, adding three more carbon dioxides, and it will go through the whole cycle again, and it will generate another G3P. And then what will happen is those two G3Ps, since they're both half glucose molecules, will bond to together to create glucose. But the Calvin cycle has to occur twice. They call it a double cycle, each cycle taking in three carbon dioxides um, to create glucose. That kind of makes sense if you remember, because glucose is a six carbon molecule. And to make glucose, you need six carbons, and that would require six carbon dioxides. But this cycle has to occur twice. Each cycle generates half a glucose molecule. And those two half glucose molecules bond together to create glucose. So to make a three carbon sugar, which is known as G3P, you need to use three carbon dioxides, nine ATPs, and six NADPHs. Now if, think about this. This also makes sense because if you remember how many hydrogens are in glucose, glucose has, has 12 hydrogens. So to make half of glucose, you need six hydrogens, and you're getting those six hydrogens from NADPH. And then the products of doing the Calvin cycle once, we get G3P, half a glucose molecule, and then obviously we've used those nine ATP, so we get nine NADP, and then we get six NADP+. Plus. These are going to go back to the light reactions, where they'll be turned back into ATP and NADPH. But remember, like we said, you have to do this cycle twice to get a glucose molecule. So, the requirements for making a glucose molecule are six carbon dioxides, and that gives you the six carbons, 18 ATP, and then 12 NADPH. And those 12 NADPHs give you the 12 um, hydrogens that are ne necessary to make glucose, because if you remember, just so I can write this down, so, although it's hard to write since I'm not on a small board, the formula for glucose is C6, does not look like a 6, C6, H12, O6. So to make glucose, you're getting the carbons from carbon dioxide, you use six of these, and you're getting the hydrogen, 12 of these, from the NADPH. Um, so overall, to make a glucose molecule, you need six carbon dioxides, 18 ATPs, and 12 NADPHs. So here we're at the summary slide for all the photosynthesis um, and it's important really at the end of the photosynthesis that you end, you realize the general purpose um, of the light reactions in the Calvin cycle. So in the light reactions, the purpose of the light reactions is to take the energy of light and the electrons from water, and, in, and this occurs in the thylakoid um, with the help of the chlor, chlor, uh, chlorophyll which absorbs light. And in the light reactions, the energy of light and the electrons from water are used to make ATP, and an ADPH. And then, in the Calvin cycle, which occurs in the stroma, carbon dioxide is used, or brought into the cycle, with my favorite, my favorite enzyme in the whole world, and named after my cat, Rubisco. So carbon dioxide is brought into the cycle. And then using the energy from ATP, which was made in the light reactions, and the electrons from NADPH, the Calvin cycle is used to reduce carbon dioxide to a three carbon sugar called G3P. Um, remember, the Calvin cycle has to occur twice to make a glucose, because you make two G3Ps, one per cycle, and the two, the two G3Ps bond together um, to make glucose. Um, and then this glucose can be turned into starch for storage. It also can be turned into amino acids to make protein and fatty acids to make lipids. 
Um, so essentially, all your organic molecules, your proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, are made in this Calvin cycle for us to use. Um, that is it for the lesson. Um, do the guided questions, and I will see you guys on Monday.